Ambassador to the United States, Saeed Jawad. Welcome to both of you. Very Thank nice you to very have you. Thank you very much. And Mr. Ambassador, part of the problem is as the Taliban come back into the country, people of goodwill, even in the rural villages, may want to do the right thing, but they worry about reprisals from the Taliban. This is true. The way Taliban operates is by forcing people into submission. They don't provide an alternative to what the United States or the Afghan government is doing as far as providing educational opportunities. And the way they operate is by terrorizing people. And there is no future for such a vision. They might be able to undermine a few of our efforts as far as building more, more schools, but the people are truly determined. And and the people are also very fortunate to have the support and the friendship of the United States and also the First Lady of the United States. Can you imagine for the, how the situation will be for the women of Bamiyan, an isolated, poor province of Afghanistan, that have witnessed with their tears on their eye the slaughter of their children, the destruction of the magnificent Buddha, to be standing on the line to shake hands with the First Lady of the United States. So there are challenges in Afghanistan, definitely, but there's also a lot of signs of progress. We are optimistic for our future. We have made a big progress. I want to share uh, with our audience uh, what the Wall Street Journal had to say about the situation there, in which you were quoted widely in, in the article, if we can, to give them a sense of the political reality that we're dealing with. The Taliban are setting up courts and other local government institutions across southern Afghanistan, challenging U.S. efforts to pacify the country and bolster the authority of the central government in Kabul. Afghanistan's ambassador to the United States, Saeed Jawad, said that the Taliban is expanding its reach into Afghans' daily lives. It is a disgrace that seven years after the beginning of the military operations in Afghanistan, we are seeing a U-turn back to how the situation was before September 11th. He said that's the Wall Street Journal. What can the central government, what should the central government, your government, be doing more of to counteract what is going on in those rural areas where the Taliban have come back in, even in a non-military way? The people of Afghanistan have done their job as far as electing a president, a parliament, in, an, in a democratic government. What my government needs is more resources to deliver services, to provide protection to our people. So in many areas uh, that where, where there is lack of delivery of the services because of the lack of human capital on the part of the Afghan people or the shortage of resources, the Taliban are making a comeback. It is not, they, they, they do not provide a vision for the future of the country. Therefore, more investment in building in education in Afghanistan is very important. The future of Afghanistan, of the new generation of Afghan people, of Afghan women, will depend on further investing in education to, 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 to train a new generation of Afghan leaders and also to provide for true gender equality. Uh, General David McKernan, who is running American military operations there, I heard him in a briefing the other night saying, we have an absence of human capital. All the lawyers, the accountants, the teachers have left the country. That's right. We have to build And they a... left a long time ago. They, right. It's not, you know, and a lot of people have come back, of course. There are Afghans who have come back from, uh, who left, you know, before the Taliban really even. But, of course, there are a lot who haven't come back. And can you blame them? I mean, it's a very, very difficult life. And people who've built their lives in another country, in the United States or in Europe, um, you know, it's it's hard. It's a sacrifice for them. But do we have to have a new international model? Most of the emphasis, understandably, has been on the military equation, trying to shut off the Taliban in Pakistan and mm -hmm. fight them on the ground in uh, in Afghanistan itself. Should we be going to our allies and saying, "Look, we have to step up here on building roads and on building markets and sure, on, building and on electricity schools. and infrastructure"? I mean, all of those things. Afghanistan needs everything. There's no infrastructure. There's not just not expensive infrastructure like sewage and water treatment and electricity, but there's no infrastructure of laws. And you know, all of those things take time, and and we can we need to help however we can. But I will say there are. Military groups, the PRTs, the Provisional uh, Reconstruction Teams that are there from many, many countries. I don't maybe 18, is it that many? 40 countries have troops in Afghanistan. Yeah, but that yeah, have these PRTs yeah. that are building schools, that are working to uh, train policemen, for instance. Uh, there are a lot of civilians from the United States. I've met when I w went to the uh, police training institute where I met the women police officers, the the uh, policemen that were there, some were from Texas, the, the trainers that were there uh, helping train. So there are many people who are doing whatever they can. But you're right. How can we increase 
every one of those, every piece of it, including the civilian uh, people that help, and then how, you know, what more can the PRTs, these provisional re uh, reconstruction teams, do to help educate Afghanis so that they can do uh, what they want to do for their country and what we 